Oh Fred, this island is so beautiful. It's the perfect getaway retreat. I thought you'd like it. We're going to have a ball. And what makes you say that? So let's start from scratch in iClone and create our tropical island getaway. Trying to use pretty much the basic props that will come with iClone uh, as much as possible. We may change a few textures here and there. But uh, let's start with a terrain and we'll go over and click on terrain. Now iClone comes with some very basic terrains which are excellent and uh, they can be modified. So let's load the island in and let's back up and I'm using my scroll wheel here and the shift key. I'm going to look at this, uh, what they call an island. I'm not sure if I'd call it an island, but uh, I guess it could be. Uh, I want to uh, scale it down for now and uh, work with it on a smaller scale. Uh, so how do we do that? You really don't have your scaling adjustments for terrain, but if you go over to this object's modify panel, you'll see this right here, convert to prop. And when we convert it to a prop, we can select that object, and uh, I'm going to hit the R key, and notice we can scale, and we can rotate and move and do things that we really couldn't quite do uh, before. Now we can rotate here, we can now, so there's the scale gizmo. So I'm going to scale it down just for our purposes uh, to work on it a little bit here. I'm going to turn off the grid for now. The control G will turn off the grid. There we go. Take a look at our object now. We'll zoom in once again using the uh, shift key. And so this is the island. And of course, if you uh, add your water, you'll be able to make an island uh, as you adjust the water level. So let's just choose gentle wave here. And of course, you can adjust the height of the water here. Uh, I like to go over and select the water and hit the W key and uh, turn off my gizmo. And now I can use my scroll wheel and I can adjust the height of the water really easily that way. But uh, you can adjust it either way you like. But for now, let's go ahead and just turn that off. Uh, also, one fun thing uh, you could do with this landscape, now that we've converted it to a prop, uh, let's get our gizmo tool up, uh, and I'm going to hit this snap function. Uh, I'm going to turn it upside down. Now, notice the polygons are invisible on this side, but you can go down here and turn on two-sided polygons. And uh, you could create an underwater world uh, with water above, and then you could go underneath the water, you could create some water effects, and now you've got an underwater uh, terrain. You might want to once again adjust the textures, but uh, you could create some real cool worlds that way just by flipping that prop uh, terrain around once you make it a prop. And uh, that's kind of fun to do. But uh, for now, let's just turn off our water and let's go back and rotate this back around and look at our island here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, play with the uh, scale tool. I'm going to scale it down a bit like so, adjust the height there. Okay, now uh, this would make a nice beach so we'll turn our water back on and once again you can adjust the height of the water. You have to select it over here. You can adjust the height through the size by adjusting your height right here, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, adjust it with my mouse. And there's the height adjustment there. Uh, you can kind of tell it's water if you add some sky, so let's add just a basic sky here. And now we can see the reflection of the sky in the water. So uh, we've got, you know, we, this could now become an island with a beach, uh, once again, by either adjusting the island surface by lowering it or raising it and now we've got what we could use as a beach. We talked about maybe making a, a longer straight beach is a thing you could do so let's select that 
let's adjust this um, diffusion map here. Let's click on that and let's go into uh, I've saved through the months and years all kinds of textures. These are uh, tileable textures so they make real nice textures for large objects. Now you'll notice you can really see the pattern here pretty easily and as you get closer it really breaks apart. So since this is a tileable image map I can adjust to uh, make it look a little more detailed as you get closer. And now as we get closer you can see it's looking a little better. Uh, another thing you might want to do is add another texture to the blend map to give it uh, a secondary texture to work with and uh, to give it more of a warm beach look we can go to uh, the blend mode of overlay and once again I'm going to increase the texture tiling here let's say 15 or so. Also you could add a bump map doing the same thing here's a tileable texture now notice once again it's stretching that bump map over the entire terrain so let's select the bump map and then increase its tiling value let's go 20 or so and now as we get close you see we've got some nice texturing going on and we can adjust and play with that here uh, but as we get close that's always been a problem is uh, keeping things looking good as the camera gets close so that would work as a beach so uh, that that might be a plus for you. Now let's uh, undo all that for now. I'm going to go back to where we were with our... there we are. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, duplicate this object. I'm going to uh, select it and I'll make sure I've got the uh, gizmo here. It is selected. I'm going to hold down the control key and drag and notice we have a second object and I can now change that and I can now move that anywhere I need to move it. We now have a second object which we might want to use for our island motif. So I'm going to uh, take the first island I'm going to uh, scale it down a little bit here and let's now play with it a little more. Let's go back to adjusting that texture and do that texture there. And we'll increase it to 20 and we'll add another texture here just for fun. And I'm picking an image map. As I say, I've selected these, collected these image maps through the years. Now one place I love to go to find textures when I need textures for iClone is uh, cgtextures.com. These are free and they get just thousands and thousands of textures. Uh, if you uh, join for a nominal membership fee you can download as many and as large a texture as you want. Otherwise you're limited to smaller sizes but they're still plenty big for iClone and you're limited to a few megabytes uh, every 24 hours so you'll have to come back each day and download your quota and get some more but they have just thousands and thousands. Uh, a lot of them are tileable and uh, that makes them just really really cool for uh, ground purposes but uh, it's a great site and uh, you'll find just thousands of great textures to use for your surfaces. Now let's get back and I'm going to uh, adjust scale this and let's just play around with this and uh, start uh, creating maybe a beach and by adjusting these two objects, which were uh, terrains, we can create an island effect, potentially, and uh, a beach effect with the other object. So it's just a matter of adjusting these objects and getting them to look where, how you want them to look. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rotate this around so you can see it here with the sun. Instead of adjusting the sun, I'm going to adjust my terrains objects and uh, just a matter of playing with the object and getting uh, 
the look you want. Now it probably won't work from all angles, but I always uh, tend to think of an iClone project as working on the back lot of a movie studio and I'm creating my props and sets and uh, creating it just so it looks good in the camera and nothing else. I'm creating it just for the camera and uh, by adjusting these objects, adjusting their height, uh, we can create a beach effect and an island effect. And I'm going to keep playing with these a while to get what I think will work. And it's really going to be just a matter of adjusting the uh, positioning, the size, the scale, uh, tweaking that. I'm going to get the gizmo so you can see. You know, you can tweak this a little bit, tweak it up, depending on what you want to do. This will save you uh, some time learning how to build objects. Now, ideally, yes, when you learn how to build your own objects in a 3D modeling program, that'll be the best way to go. But you can do a lot right here in iClone and get possibly what you need without having to uh, learn a lot of things quickly. Uh, and take your time and use iClone. Okay, I've been playing around here for a few minutes and finally I think we're getting close to what I want. And uh, once again, it's just a matter of adjusting and adjusting till you get uh, what looks good for the camera. Now, it's not going to look from all camera angles. Uh, the prop, as I said, we're working with the iClone props, so there's only so much we can do, but we can manipulate them and get them uh, looking kind of cool. So we've uh, kind of got us a beach here. Uh, we've got a, another object here. As I said, we've turned it into an object, and we've adjusted that terrain, and uh, we can uh, tweak it and uh, get it to look like we like. And just finding the ideal position that works. But uh, we're starting to get close. Uh, we've got a beach, got the water. Uh, as I say, some objects, some, some camera angles may not work as good as others, so I don't particularly like this out here. So I can maybe adjust that around and just don't film from that angle. Film up close here. Now we need to kind of start seeing what it looks like with a uh, with an avatar. So let's get Chuck here, and uh, you'll probably need to adjust your scale. And that's the beauty of this. Uh, let's look at our props. We've got the two islands. Select them both, and let's turn on our gizmo, and uh, we can now adjust together the size we need, however large or small and uh, get our size just like we like it uh, to match our avatar's scale that we need. Okay, so uh, that's looking pretty good. We can now turn back on the object like right here, this particular island. We can now, if we uh, right click on the object uh, anywhere, it'll bring up a menu and it will say add to terrain. And we click that, and now it goes back to being a terrain. And uh, if our object has foot contact, like uh, Chuck here has foot contact turned on, he will now collide with the terrain. He wouldn't have done that correctly uh, if we had kept it as an object. Okay, so that's good. And now we can plant grass and trees uh, along here as well. Now this object can be turned back into a terrain if we choose, but I'm going to leave it as an object for now. Uh, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, obviously, it'd be great if you had some palm trees. You'll have to go to the marketplace content and buy some uh, palm trees if this is going to be a tropical island. Uh, if you don't want to spend any money, uh, just use the trees that came uh, with it. You've got some banyan trees that might work okay. Uh, now, let's scale these down so uh, they'll work better. And I, a lot of times, like to use a tree just as foliage. And so I'll let it go down below 
the ground and uh, break up some of this hard edge we have from the beach to our other object and uh, put some foliage in there and so drag those around uh, hold down the control key and create another one and rotate it out and uh, create some more foliage so you can keep doing that create the, the foliage you need you can scale it down smaller so it's a more detailed looking object and then just keep dragging various trees that you have if you as I said if you have some palm trees you can buy some of those you can truly give it the tropical island feel very easily but uh, I'm just going to use these for now and create just some some shrubberies that'll uh, help the beach look a little more like a real world object and not to keep rotating these objects around Okay. Uh, once again, uh, we've got our uh, sun, and we want to make sure our light is uh, turned on. So uh, let's turn on the light here and uh, make sure uh, we have shadows turned on, and uh, we should have self-cast shadow. Typically, it'll come on with drop shadow, and drop shadow is not going to give you a shadow for your avatar correctly, especially when you have a, a terrain now. So we want to make sure that light is turned on to self-cast and uh, crank up your resolution usually it'll be around here and usually uh, the bias will be pretty high I like to crank the bias down pretty low and uh, now we can see what's going on there rotate the Sun I'm just uh, holding down the uh, right mouse button now and uh, rotating the Sun where I want it to look and let's up that resolution is good. The, act, the shadow will be a little more accurate that way. Uh, so now we have the beach. Uh, if you want to get waves, uh, you need to get with some of our expert iClone users. They've been uh, talking about how to create wave effects. We don't really have a wave effect built into iClone at this point in time, but hopefully at some point we will. Now if you do choose uh, to go to the content store, you'll find uh, palm trees uh, in one of the packs and you might want to scale them a little bit but uh, you can add the palm trees get the effect a little closer to an island feel we want to raise those around you can once again hold down the control key and drag out some more and then get them down here on the terrain usually they'll line up to the terrain but not all the time so uh, I'm going to adjust that. Uh, the water uh, can be adjusted. The wave size may not be correct for the scale that you're working with, so you can uh, select the water and adjust that wave size a little smaller. Uh, and you can speed it up if you need to uh, to create the look you're after. There. So I hope that gives you some ideas on how to use some of the basic props and terrains in iClone.